the day has finally arrived. I am going to go and see my mother. I can't believe it's been well over a year since I last saw mummy. I can't wait to see Percy. I just hope that I make it to South Africa because with the travel restrictions changing all the time, I never know if it's going to happen till the last minute or not. I'm just doing the finishing touches to my packing. And as usual, I have packed far too much. This suitcase weighs a ton. I'm very worried about its weight. We'll find out when I get to the airport how bad that is. But it's filled with gifts from my mother that people sent in Caddo at the Chateau. And I just think she'll love opening them there. Right. Well, last few pieces. Must not forget my computer. I won't be needing you, mini Scott man, because Scott man himself will be coming to South Africa. I've just finished writing all of the patron cards so I can go with a clear conscience knowing that everything is done. And I'm going to see mummy. And Philip is going to see South Africa for the first time. How are you feeling, Philip? Excited. Yeah? Yeah. It's going to be great. This is going to be my last croissant for a really, really long time, so I'm going to savour it. Only I'm going to savour it in the car because I'm massively late. I had lots of massive parties, invite everyone round. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. I've already told Sabina to try out every guest room possible. Yeah, <laughs> that's a very good idea. Yeah. So now I'll have, have a bath in all the bars. Someone has to try them out. Just have fun. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to put the last things in the car. Great. Goodbye, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much. Goodbye, all. <laughs> <laughs> by, Miss, by Miss Jarvis. <laughs> I know that you will keep the place running ship shape, Bristol fashion, better than I would have done, so I'm absolutely. And then, and then we do this. Yes, yes. Yeah. Like the curtsy, right? Yeah. Oh it just feels right. <laughs> Thank you, so. thank you for everything. Yes, really. Have a great, 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 because Philip is 99% sure his passport is packed. I'm one of the people who checks 10 times. Yeah. And we're having a magnificent meal on the way to the airport. Our final hangout together for a good old gossip. Uh, yeah. And Philip's decided to get into the holiday spirit. You've gone for a cocktail. We had a cocktail with uh, pineapple and passion fruit. and. We're in a chain baked potato restaurant. <laughs> They had cocktails on the menu. I'm not much better. I'm having a little bit of wine before the long journey ahead. Would you like nice trust, then? <laughs> this is actually really nice. All this melted cheese, which I can pour over my potato. Hmm. It's making me wonder why we're leaving France after all. Thank you for bringing us. Okay. I wish I was going to be with you at the chateau. Uh, have fun at the porcelain museum. Make it up for love it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm envious of you. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so basically they all want to be coming to South Africa with me and Philip wants to be going to the Porcelain Museum with Marie. So it's a tough time for everyone, but come on Aww. Philip. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> bye bye. Miss you. Bye. We've made it as far as check-in, but we're a little bit worried because the rules keep changing as to who is allowed in or not allowed in. And apparently the French are only allowing out British residents. When you look at the small print, it says also they're cohabiting partners. Right. We are cohabiting and we've got yes. proof of residency, so it's fingers crossed moment. Can Philip come on holiday? <laughs> Otherwise it's supposed to the museum. Supposed the museum for you <laughs> and holiday for me. We made it. We're gonna see mummy. I'm so excited. We've made it to my flat in London. And we are stuck because our day two tests haven't arrived yet. I don't know why, they're late. So we're in quarantine for the foreseeable future because we haven't even taken the test yet. So I don't know how long it's going to take to get the results. We need a project. So Philip thought that maybe we could tackle my closet. And as I can't go out anyway, may as well achieve something. So I guess I'm just going to start by taking everything out. I'm just starting with the coats. I'll need help choosing. 
My stylist is here, Philip, behind the camera. <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing. That's beautiful. You've never seen this, have you? No. I have both the back. <laughs> Uh, a little like green it. riding hood. Okay, so I can't get rid of this one. This might be a cute, this is from Tesco's. See, this is just a supermarket jacket, but I think it's quite Chanel. One little bit that needs cutting off there. And it's quite decent with jeans. So the fit is great, but I hate the studs. Oh, I love them. I think that's what makes it. Okay. It's a keep. <laughs> I used to only shop at Zara and TK Maxx and the local charity shop. So most of these things are from there, but I've increasingly been going to secondhand designer shops as well, which is amazing. Oh, this is just vintage. Okay. <gasps> this, <laughs> the puffiness Oh yeah, I know, it's like pure 80s. I think maybe I've had fun with it. It's been good. Might be time to pass on this amazing 80s relic. I like it. I know you would like it. The minute it's 80s, you love it. But I'm not convinced I'm going to wear this very much. Okay. Cell pile. This is a very nice um, scarf. Hmm. It's good to know that you had a scarf here, because whose scarf have you been using, Steph? Whose scarf have you been using? I said to Philip that I didn't want to carry too much stuff when I'm traveling. I don't like wearing lots of things, because you've already got bags to carry. So I came without a scarf, and then I used Philip's the entire <laughs> anyway, I've got one now. Good. I've gone through a few more. The pile for Charity Shop grows. And this one's I'm, I'm keeping. I really like this one. This is the sort of thing I love wearing in summer or spring because it's so easy. It's just a dress. I love dresses. You don't have to think about putting together lots of different accessories. And it has pockets. So it survived. See you another day. Now, on days when I'm even lazier than that, and I just want to slip a dress on, I can't even be bothered to choose a matching jewellery, this is obviously the perfect dress, as it appears to come with the necklace already on it. In fact, I think this would look incredible on my mother. I mm. can really see my mother in this. Yeah. Right, mummy, dress coming to you. <laughs> it's very easy again, it's just over the top of a, basically a body stocking whole outfit underneath. That's what I do for winter a lot. Black body, black tights, and then I'm sort of dressed and I can put something much more flimsy over the top, but I'm warm. I'll keep this one because it's easy. And I suspect that this next one is going to survive for exactly the same reason. <laughs> it's the perfect restaurant dress because you can eat as much as you like and get as bloated as you want and you'll be comfortable and still look chic. So I love to have dresses like this for restaurants. This was my favourite dress for a really long time. This is a vintage Dolce & Gabbana. I mean, it's the typical 90s shift dress. Turns out I still love it. Like, I'm going to keep it a bit longer. What do you think, Philip? It's beautiful. Yeah? I, like, I really like the shape. It's very nice. This one's made it through. You can see how much I have worn this one. I've loved this dress. This is C by Chloe. I bought it at the local charity shop and I think it's time for it to go back to the local charity shop. It's just to be washed a few too many millions of times is getting a bit worn, but someone else might still love it. So I'm going to take it back to the charity shop from whence it came as soon as I can get out of this quarantine. This is a bit sad because I got this at the charity shop and I really love it, but I have to admit that it really doesn't fit me because you can see it bulging here at the back and that's because to have it on my waist, I have to pull this part up. And this is made for someone with a much longer torso than me. And then if I pull it down to where their waist would be, I end up with a kind of weird muffin top situation going on. So this is not good. I think it's time, I've got to accept. My body has not elongated to fit the dress since I bought it. This is a top shop dress that I got in the charity shop here and I love it. Philip, I think, is a little bit less in love with this dress. <laughs> I think men have always struggled to understand my fascination with this dress in general, but I think it's because this, and actually the wire has sagged, so I need to put a new wire in there. It reminds me of an 18th century dress. It's like a modern version of the 18th century <laughs> dress, which is really fun. So I love it so much. I think I'm going to repair it and keep it. I love the fabric. I think the fabric's more for you than for me. Like, I love the shape. <laughs> Um, but you really like these sort of autumnally colours. Yeah, imagine that in the vegetable garden. Oh. Like underneath a pergola. With the new garden furniture. Uh, exactly. Having afternoon tea. So this, this is a uh, crazy, but I'm going to keep it. I was laughing because I just found dungarees and I was thinking, why, why would I have dungarees? I don't even remember seeing them before. I'm so proud of you. I'm not keeping them. And look, 
The charity shop don't even need to take the tag off. It's already on six pounds. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> They're going straight back to the charity shop that they came from. We need to get you proper dungarees. We really don't need to do that. I will get them for you for Valentine's Day. <laughs> do not buy me dungarees for Valentine's Day. Uh, this is the um, H and M William Morris collaboration. Yeah, it's I really beautiful. like this. One. I'm keeping this one. And so this is my pile for the charity shop. I've got a pile for selling over there. This is a keeping pile. Well, this is perfect. I have managed to clear all of these bags of shoes and clothes, so they're ready to go to the charity shop as soon as we get out of quarantine. Big moment after waiting several days for them to arrive. Yes. Our tests have arrived, they're done, and we're putting them in the special priority post box for COVID tests. Here we go. Let's go. We might be allowed out of the flat other than to come to the post box in the next, well, what, three days? Yes. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Luckily, we didn't get to clear out, right? We, we spent the time doing something useful. <laughs> seconds I will find out if I've got some amazing fake books for the library. Eight seconds, still the highest and in fact only bidder. I'm way under the estimate that I gave. Yes! Yes! Oh wow! Okay, let me show everybody what I just got. This is our little local auction house, which I love. There are somewhere between 15 and 17, we're not sure the exact number, of these sets of leather-bound fake books. When we make the library in the winter salon, we can have a couple of fake doors, one leading to the bar and one going to the downstairs loo off the winter salon that will be there. And we can have these on the doors and there's lots and lots of them. And the quality is incredible. So I'm so happy. And there's one more thing coming up that I'm very excited about that I need to leave a bid for, but it's in an hour. So I'm going to wait a little bit longer. It's a stunning day bed. We'll see. The auction just finished and I've got the other thing I was bidding on. It is an 18th century day bed. I think it will be for the Grand Salon, but that's not 100% certain yet. It is so, so beautiful. And it was sold at Christie's in Paris for 4,500 euros. I have got it for less than that in the little local auction house where it came up. When it was being sold at Christie's, it was in a bad state. It had its original fabric, which frankly looked a little bit better because it looked older, but it was totally worn and, and tattered. And so it did need reupholstering. The people who bought it then clearly reupholstered it very simply in this white cover. I think I will just keep that, not spend any more on it and dress it with really stunning cushions and beautiful fabrics. Goodness knows we have enough in the fabric cupboard to be able to make lovely things for this. And it will fit in with presumably any scheme we go for. So I'm very excited and very happy to have spotted it. And Lalande has just grown a little bit more beautiful. Here we are, Cancer Research UK also known as my external closet, where I come and mix things up. Ooh, yellow jacket, no. I'm not here to buy, am I? <laughs> We've dropped everything off at the charity shop and now we're here at another charity shop. This is the Oxfam Bookshop. I love this place. Oh, let's see what treasures we can find. Philip just offered to get me this one just because of the title, The Little Lady of the Big House. He says, that's me. <laughs> but I'm not sure I'll get around to reading this one. This is a beautiful two-volume edition on the life of Queen Victoria, I think printed in the late 19th century. It's really extraordinary. The life of Her Most Gracious Majesty the Queen has such great engravings in it. Wow. And I don't think I need this book. It would be lovely for the library, but... Gosh, it's stunning. Okay, we went mad. We went absolutely mad. This is what used to happen when I would go book shopping with my father in secondhand bookshops. We'll show you what we got when we get home. I don't think we can take all of this on the plane to South Africa. That's though. not going to be our reading material <laughs> for South Africa. No, maybe not. Maybe one or two. I think we need to go home before stopping anywhere else. No more charity shops for us no, today. No, 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 no. We did so well dropping off all those bags and now we're coming back with more. <laughs> we're back at the flat and I wanted to show you the books that we got because I think they're incredible. This, I'll start with this because this is a little bit unusual for us to have bought. 
the Journal of Egyptian Archaeology. Uh, there's several volumes, six volumes in total, from many different years. So here's an entire article on Ptolemaic contract of sale. I'm sure tremendously fascinating if you understand what on earth they're talking about. But I know a man who does. Uh, and I called Curtis and he doesn't have these. So he really wanted them. These are going to be my gift to Curtis. I owe him a huge thank you for that amazing photo shoot that he did of me, which I loved every minute of. So the Journal of Egyptian Archaeology, that's all they had, unfortunately. I got every volume they had. Then I found translations of Hafiz poetry. I think this looks beautiful. No conflict. No conflict when the flute is playing. For then I see every movement emanates from God's holy dance. I'm going to enjoy this book very much. This is amazing. Philip spotted this great spot. The love letters of Henry VIII. And I was immediately fascinated. What does a homicidal maniac write to the women he loves? And the great thing is that they actually have um, photos of the texts themselves. And then the texts written out exactly as he wrote them, and then the modern English translation, because a lot of them were written, especially to Anne Boleyn, I noticed in the early pages, he was writing to Anne in French. So the love letters to Anne are in French, then there's the English translation, and of course the photos at the back. That's gonna be fascinating. I got a biography, the Duchess Countess, a fascinating woman in a dazzling world, soaked in sex, money, and ambition. And it's about Elizabeth Chudley, Duchess of Kingston, the Countess of Bristol, who went on trial at Westminster Hall for bigamy in April 1776. And at that time, the story drew more attention in society than the American War of Independence. So this I'm looking forward to. Then mythological passions, which really frustratingly was still wrapped up. And this is a catalogue from the Prado about the greats using mythological motifs in their art and how they would try to outdo each other with the same motifs. So I think, oh, here we have Venus and Adonis, which I'm big into learning more about because that is a story on the tapestry wallpaper that I've chosen for the Marquis' sitting room at La Lande. It's the story of Venus and Adonis wrapping all the way around. So I'll be learning more about that. This is your pile, Philip. Mm -hmm. You have a lovely edition of two plays, three plays by Ibsen. Ibsen. Yes, I think it's a 1930s yes, edition. Yeah, such a pretty edition. And, oh, what I love, if you flip the page twice, uh, I think. There's an inscription. Yes. Uh, Girard, I can't read the, the rest. Um, 1934. Exactly. From Kate, I think. Yes. Oh, wow. Lovely edition. I'm very excited about reading that one. Then these two I might steal from you immediately. <laughs> Mario Praz's book on neoclassicism. Mm -hmm. And this, the creation of the Rococo decorative style. Now you spotted that one, but I'm so excited yeah. about reading that. Because it's really uh, a very meaty book. This is not a coffee table book. This is just a wonderful description of exactly how the Rococo style evolved and where it came from. And then with illustrations at the back. Oh, stunning. Yeah, very specific details. It's going to be great. And speaking of great, <laughs> the great nice segue. houses. Thank you very much. <laughs> Which is also a lovely old book on some of the world's most beautiful houses. All of these. Some in France. 1968, this book. 1968. It's stunning. And some is in colour. I was quite surprised by that. There are a few pictures in colour, I say, just um, looking at black and white now. 36. There it's, we go. There's a colour. I remember that page 36 is a yeah. bit near us. Oh yes, as le rideau, the Chateau de Bourneau, Erin and JB's chateau, is a 19th century copy of as le rideau. Honestly, the Chateau de Bourneau is beautiful. It's a spectacular book. It's like, oh, that looks very familiar. That looks very much like Bourneau. Yes, Bourneau is inspired by as le rideau. Hmm. Please excuse us. <laughs> I'm going to get a cup of tea, actually. I've got a turmeric coconut rice latte. I've never had that before. It's delicious. And I'm going to have a Okay, I'm starting with the Duchess Countess. All right. I'm going to start with... Rococo. 
I knew you were going to pick that one. We have come for a classic night out in London. We're going to see Agatha Christie's The Mouse Trap. Just waiting for it to start, and most excitingly, I have a whiskey on ice, which just feels right for a good murder mystery. A whiskey to see Christie. <laughs> a whiskey to see Christie. I love it. I'm wearing one of my Christmas presents from Philip, but with a little dagger for a night out with a murder. <laughs> I really went full on vintage for this. See, this was Nick's grandmother's handbag. So yes, I'm feeling very much the past. Glasses? I'm not sure that you get quite the, the same effect with the mask, to be fair. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you think's done it? <laughs> I'll let you know, by halfway through, I'm sure I'll have it sussed. <laughs> It's the interval now. Philip and I have got some pretty good theories on who might be the murderer. But let's go and see if we're right. We also know. Well, I think we also know who's going to be murdered next. Mm, not got an inkling. Mm. Not sure though. Me neither. I've uh, let the whiskey go. It's time for a bit of tea in the second half. It's a very British night. So to celebrate getting out of quarantine, we decided on having the most British evening possible. So we have fish, chips, mushy peas, served in a darling little saucepan. And just to make it absolutely British, we've also got macaroni cheese. So, oh, and tartar sauce, which is my favorite sauce. The only thing that's not British is the wine. When I'm hitting Philip, I'm diving in. Where to start? We've come to the local auction house because although we're leaving today, we're going to get the aeroplane later this afternoon. We've just found out that the auction house cannot hold the objects that I bought until I'm back from South Africa. So we have no choice but to collect them ourselves. And I think that means walking the daybed all the way back to the flat. Here we go. I hope it's not too heavy. Philip's trying to hail a cab outside. I've collected everything except for the daybed here. These are the wonderful fake books that are going to be for the fake doors in the library at Lelang. And curtains, these are for my London flat. My curtains are completely frayed and I needed new ones. And we're going to see if we can fit this in the taxi too. This is spectacular. It's a French Libertour cast iron. I'm going to use it as a garden sofa. And this is the front piece for it just beautiful and that was 70 pounds i'm really pleased with that buy not having much luck on the taxi front sadly surely there'll be one eventually yes he's found one the cab's just turning around for us okay here we go with the curtains load number one coming up we made it into the taxi with everything except for the day bed so we've got the whole of the cast iron french bed it's going to make such a nice sofa in the garden. All of the curtains for my flat and all of the fake books. What do we read? What do we got? Let's see. One at random. Ah, oh, yes. Eminent Etonians. I I've always wanted to read that. Well, the, the most eminent Etonian I know is, of course, Nick. The elusive Nick was an Etonian. Greek literature. Modern science in Bible lands. A classic. <laughs> First one is done. Everything is in the flat and the taxi brought us straight back here. So that was fantastic. Now we're going in to see if we can carry the day bed home. We are so lucky because we went in to carry it and the owner had chatted to us earlier when we were doing the first run and he'd apparently left instructions um, with the guys there that although they don't usually allow things to stay for very long, they are going to keep it for us and they're going to deliver it. He said he just felt too sorry for us having to walk back with it and we don't live that far away. So they're incredibly kind and it means that we don't have to carry an 18th century day bed around today. We can go back, and get ready. We have to get a move on, we have to get to yes. the airport, but, but we're distracted by all the great things. I, I love them, they're, they're so well done, but there's one thing that's really annoying. <laughs> It's like someone didn't put the books back into the correct order. So you've got volume two, volume five, <laughs> volume seven, six, four, three, eight, one. So they're all there. And it's so... My OCD can't handle that. I actually really like it because it makes it look as though it's lived in and someone's actually been reading them. Well, same here. It's the same here. Oh, no way! 
That's uh, really clever. Yeah, nine, uh, 1892, 1887, 1897. What's quite funny is I have actual copies of Punch magazine, I have think. Have you? Yeah, leather bound, like that. They're not the same colour binding, but they're old. Okay. So we could put them with it. Yeah. It's going to look so real. <laughs> Philip just trying one out. They come with these stands, which obviously we won't actually use because no. that would make it far too deep for a fake cupboard. But they, they do, they come out slightly different amounts each yes. book. Makes it very realistic. It's, it's trying to push that one back slightly. <laughs> <laughs> it's really like an OCD nightmare. <laughs> okay, this is great. And we could stare at these all day, but why haven't we got our suitcases? I'm just going to put this back. As soon as we get back from South Africa, this curtain can come down. That one has already been pulled down. It was in shreds. And these can go up. We've got these pale green. I would have loved yellow. I really like the yellow in here. But they only had one yellow curtain, which I got, and it will be for probably the upstairs bedroom. It's a lovely, lovely curtain. But this green silk is also lovely, and I think it will be pretty in here. We've made it to the airport, and now we just need to find the little tartan wonder. Look who we have found! <laughs> I, I love it. You've actually gone for a tartan sort of safari hat. Uh, it's a uh, Viva La South Africa. Viva La South Africa. Yeah, okay. I'm, go I'm going for the, the big hunter look. And actually, there's a lot of tartan going on, isn't there? <laughs> Philip, you've, you've brought your tartan yeah. scarf. Yeah, it was a gift from Ruth for Christmas. Yeah, it's lovely. It's so I soft. It. Oh, it's That's so huge. soft. It's like it's gorgeous. <laughs> gorgeous. Yes. So we all ready. Yeah. Ladies will it? never be. <laughs> I can't believe it. I'll believe it when we're on the plane. I know. I know. Mummy's so excited. <laughs> well, at least the bag going to South Africa. <laughs> never really know until the other end. Oh, waking up with the sun over Africa. We're about to land after an 11 hour flight and I think I got a triumphant two hours of sleep. People always say it must be terrible being really small. I was thinking during the night it has its advantages. Oh, it's great on flights. I just sort of lay out there, you know, and stretch my wee legs. And I know these big tall people were all folded up and <laughs> bent up, and you, you could see they were all getting cramped. I know, poor Philip, it's not as nice for him as for us. Hello. Yeah, thank you. We're so relieved to see it again. What adorable travel companions I have. We've spotted our first elephants. They're big for me and Gerald, but we're hoping for slightly larger elephants at some point. Am I taller than that? I'm taller than that. We won't be trying that in the safari park. <laughs> <laughs> One of the most fun things about the airport here is that you can take the trolleys, the baggage trolleys, on the escalator. Our flight has just been cancelled. The Margaret is quite exhausted from last night's flight and we've just found out our onward flight is now cancelled but we're so close nothing is going to stop us from getting to Mummy and Percy now. Our flight has been cancelled. Stephanie's managed to book a car at Durban so everything's, everything's good they've got us onto a British Airways flight Yes, that's right, we are on another flight. My bag is going through on another adventure. We are going to make it after all. Let's just hope the car hire I've just booked works at the other end. This is about like Thank trains, you. trains and aeroplanes. We're having an adventure around Africa. If our flight hadn't been cancelled, we would actually be home at the beach house by now. And instead, we're about to get onto our next flight. Someone's excited about it. <laughs> I've just texted Mummy to tell her we've just landed. Excellent. At Limoges. Oh dear. <laughs> Frankly, we don't know whether we're coming or going anymore. I wouldn't even be surprised to land in Limoges exactly. right now. <laughs> Let's hope the car's As far as I'm concerned, yeah. it could be on the moon. <laughs> well, we've got all our luggage, but poor Jerry's bag has not arrived no. in uh, yet another little setback on the journey. Jerry's gone off with the man from Lost Luggage. They're going to see if they can track his bag and see what's happened to it. Oh dear, what a day. This has been the longest day of my life. <laughs> but they did say if they can just find it, they're going to deliver it to us. If they can find Scott Man's suitcase, 
I reckon somebody has been here and they know my suitcase is full of goodies. I think they know that the Scotman superhero outfit is in there. Exactly. What am I going to do without that? <laughs> you got the belt. You can show the world the belt. Brilliant. Postman pack. Postman pack. Postman pack. That is black and white pack. I mean, admittedly, I just got the cheapest car hire, but this is quite something. Right, let's see if we can get any luggage in here. Maybe it's a good job I don't have my walkies. <laughs> it's got the ass for a Scott man. Gerald, let's look at the vault again. Whoa, <laughs> it was meant to be. Yeah. All right, we're one bag down. But we are a Scottmobile up. Yeah. <laughs> which is not bad. And we're in South Africa and we're only an hour and a half away. And we're heading to the beach house. We're going there right now. It'll be pitch black when we get there, but hey. Exactly. <sighs> We've only been travelling for two days. <laughs> Quarter to nine on the second day after setting off, we have arrived. Wow. Right, all we need to do is get in. I can't believe after all this time. Oh, it is so good to be back. Oh, it's lovely. <laughs> Mummy just said that she hadn't made any food for us and yet the table is laid. Maybe not with Philip-like precision, but it's been laid. Mummy, if you haven't cooked anything, how come the table is laid? Well, I was... I, I was hoping it would be late for tomorrow. Ah, oh, I don't believe her. <laughs> Mummy, this looks delicious. And after a very, very, very long journey. And a uh, stressful journey. I don't know, Gerald. I think we sailed through it. And they found your bag. That's Did the big they? news. Yes, yes, it's being delivered oh, tomorrow. I found a, a friend um, <laughs> my lawyers. <laughs> Mr. Brady, you not believe it. Look what's just turned up. <laughs> And I heard him in the background saying, put it back, put the stuff back in the case. <laughs> you know, so I think we're okay. <laughs> Mummy and Percy, I'm so happy to be here, I can't tell you. Well, I think we will end on a cheers. And next week I'll show you all around and we can go on South African adventures together. But for now, I think we're going to eat and go to bed. Cheers, everybody! Cheers! Cheers. Cheers. Lovely to be in South Africa. So happy, Mummy, so happy. I'm delighted. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, then please leave a like because it helps us enormously with the YouTube algorithm. And for more Chateau content, don't forget to subscribe. A huge thank you to all of my patrons, especially the Dauphins and Dauphines of Lalanne. Yadeland, Ether, Alice, Alan, Dan, Banda, Wailing, Banshee, Cecilia, Begum, Denise, Behrens, Lauren Bell, Jill Bidwell, Candice Blackburn, Danelle Benakovic, Brandon and John Michael, Paulina Calabro, Matthew Chuck, Gregory Clear, Linda Su Concepcion, Erin Conklin, Zoe Dork, Sylvia Dem, Jim Demersman and Richard Paternord, Sakura Dennis, Jason Doobie, Jackie Ellison, Nicholas W. Fairfax, Kevin Fossum, Fifi Greenberg, Donald Good Millard, Crystal Hardy, Delaine Holbrook, Kim Hasselhoff, David and Tong Henderson, Camilla Herrera, Jacqueline Holmes and Ken Bates. Karen and Mike Hopper, Sandra Hawley, John Hostetler, Melissa Jansen, Sandra Carafa, Brian Kelsey and Phil Burnt, Jimmy Kemp, David and Samuel Land, Morgan Lawley, Angel Leonard, Lisbeth and Enno, Shelley Little, Janet Huff Lombard, Radika Madala, Marina, Frank Martin, Grant and Erin McLoon, Joanne Morton, Joey Mullen, Karen Nicholson, Kathy Norrie, JC Award, Ellen Person, Wendy Pietek, Frank Poposky and James Snow, Tamara Price, Armin Rahman, Tonya Renee, Colette Retif, Hanny Ross, Mary Ryan, Elizabeth Scanlon, Sven Schreiber, Jennifer Shanks, Rebecca Shorrock, Carl and Laurie Siebert, Teresa Sloan, Sabrina So. Apti, Nanette Solverson, Monty Stapura, Renee Valelli, Victoria, Jessica Walker, Laura Watkins, Lucas Wallen, James Whalen, Linda Viest, Christine Wilson, Greg Wood, David Young, and Lodovico Zordanazzo. And thanks to all of you.